Hi guys, it's a while since I've done this, but I thought I'd have a look at Wing Leader from GNT. Uh, it's a game I've been looking forward to for quite a long time. I'm quite excited about it coming out. So let's have a look what's in the box. First of all, looking at the box itself, nice picture on the front, Japanese versus Chinese. I'm guessing that's flying tigers. Uh, fighting in the Far East. On the back, usual information. Picture of the map with some of the counters on it. Some information about the game, a little bit of history, uh, usual stuff, sample game counters, how long it takes to play, how many players it's for. Complexity is 6 and solitaire suitability is 5. Although people have spoken to online say actually the solitaire suitability could be marked as being higher than that as it's pretty good to play. I've not had a chance to play it yet but hopefully soon. Let's have a look inside. First thing is the rule book. Pretty substantial rule book, okay? Uh, 48 pages, I believe. Yeah, 48 pages. Don't let that put you off. The rules are split in two. You've actually got the rules towards the center, and then at the edges, you've got information, you've got pictures, you've got historical stuff, uh, lots of extra bits and pieces. So effectively, if they'd taken all this out, which is almost like an FAQ for the game, uh, you would have halved the length of the rules. So there's not actually that much to read. Plus, towards the back of it, there's optional rules, uh, extra stuff. But yeah, it describes all the stuff you'd expect. This is a game about bombing, okay? It's not a game about strategic bombing, it's a game about actual bombers being attacked by fighters, being defended by fighters, and what happens. So you're going on a mission, okay? You're either a bomber trying to get through, uh, or a series of bombers trying to get through, or your fighters trying to stop them. So you've got the components, you've got information about squadrons, the environment, setting up the game, what the sequence of play is, movement, command and control, how to do air combat, and that seems you know, fairly obvious you're going to need to do that. There's the advanced rules. Okay, that's the rule book. After that we've got the scenario book. Now the scenarios go all the way from 40 to 42. There will be a follow-up game that takes the game later on from that, and they're all over the place. Okay, you've got Northern France, you've got the Coral Sea, you've got uh, Malta, you've got Russia, you've got England, okay, you've got Southern England, Northern England, Stalingrad. So with this you can fight anything, like I say, from 1940 to 1942. So you've got your classic battles of Battle of Britain, plus also, you know, uh, the Pacific War. Right, here are the counters. Now the counters are gorgeous. You notice, looking at them, that they're side on. Okay, this is one of the important parts of the game. The game is not a top-down game. It's a game where elevation and altitude is more important than your positioning uh, laterally. You've got Spitfires, you've got Hurricanes, you've got ME109s, you've got HU111s, okay, Avengers, P40s, various different kinds of bombers. Okay, double-sided so that if it's facing the wrong way you can just flip it up it'll be facing the right way. Here you've got more planes, okay, uh, Fot Wolf 190, Blenheim bombers, uh, all sorts of different stuff, some you know quite weird and wacky stuff that you might not necessarily expect to get. You've also of course got targets, it's a game about bombing, you need some targets, so you've got carriers, you've got destroyers, you've got cloud, because cloud has a big effect, you've got barrage markers to show when you've been shot at. Okay. Then you've got your smaller markers, uh, whether you're alerted or not, whether you're climbing, whether you're diving, uh, any losses that you've taken, what your mission is. And these guys here are experts. They're the super uh, pilots. They're the really good guys. Uh, so you've got pictures of various well-known personalities. Now you've got your cards that describe what your planes can do. Now in most games, these cards would be just a thin bit of card, like a magic card. Uh, probably produced in a deck. These aren't. These are counter thickness. These are heavy weight. They're sturdy. Uh, hopefully they're going to last a long time. They don't need sleeve in. In fact, you probably need some quite uh, loose sleeves to put them in. They tell you information about a plane. So if you look at a Stuka, uh, the different altitudes, what its speed is, what its turnability is, what its climbability is, uh, what its bomb rating is, how much firepower, protection, bomb site and defense it's got when it came into use and in with which country and then any special abilities so the stuka has got dive brakes the JU-88's got speed brakes and plus one on torpedoes etc uh, on the back historical information 
information about variants. So there's some of your planes. There's a few more, some Germans, okay. And more Italians. I mean, who doesn't love a game with Italian aircraft in it? Some of them are gorgeous and some of them are pig ugly. Okay, Russians. The Brits, okay, plus and a Bristol Buffalo. Spitfire, Mark 1, Mark 5B, Ferry Battle, Bristol Blenheim, Hurricanes. Some Americans. Okay, a fantastic selection of planes. To be honest, if you're, if you're doing early war stuff, it's got the most famous planes and it's got a few obscure ones as well. So you've got a really good selection and more were going to be released. Then you've got your tables. Okay, start with the air combat table. There's one of those per player. Obviously, when you have combat, it helps you work out how much damage you're causing. On the back, you've got losses, you've got dice roll modifiers for cohesion. Cohesion is an important part of the game. Okay, uh, most fighters didn't get shot down, they just, the unit would lose cohesion and it would become ineffective. Okay, so two of those, one per player. You've got a sequence of play and flak attack table. You're going to get one of those because both players are going to share this. It's an unusual game in that the idea is that both players sit on the same side of the board, which is pretty unusual. You've got wing display, so when you've got wings you can uh, mark them on there. Okay, it's just blank on the back because that's going to be on the table and obviously you don't want to be picking it up when it's got counters on it. You can put information about them when they've got experts, uh, any special abilities that they've got. And finally you've got the map. Okay, The map, to be honest, is as boring as you could get. They're not quite squares. Uh, they're called squares in the game, but they're not quite squares. Up is altitude, and across is obviously your movement across the board. You're going to head, start at one end and try and head towards the other end. Targets will be on the ground down here. Uh, you've got a little sun marker there, so you can see uh, the position of the sun, which is quite important when you're trying to tally people, how you spot them. Uh, where the sun's heading from. If the sun's in your eyes, it's going to be more difficult. Finally, we've got the standard Dear Customer. Uh, any problems with my game, I know to get in touch with Mike and uh, give him a bit of a shouting at, but usually GMT are pretty good anyway. Dice and bags. So, looks pretty exciting, uh, had fantastic reviews, and already they're looking forward to producing a second version of the game uh, going late to war. I'm really looking forward to it. It's a game that I think I'll probably be playing mostly solitaire because I don't have many War Games opponents around here in Lincoln. Uh, but I think it's a game that if you've got any interest in aircraft at all, you're going to really, really want to get. Okay, so thanks very much for looking. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see any more of these. And uh, hope you've enjoyed seeing what's in the box for Wing Leader. Thanks very much. Goodbye.